June is here. We're almost halfway through the 2025 already. We wanted to let you know what we are expecting for June. We're going to take a closer look at what is a typical June like and then what will this June be like? We'll show you kind of the nuance of what we're expecting as we head into this six month of the year. Of course, daylight changes. We always start with this daylight changes, how much sunlight, how much heat coming from the sun and how that fluctuates throughout the year is our main driver for our seasonal changes. And then that leads to our weather changes. Now in the month of June, we don't see a lot of change. We have really slowed down the process. We are gaining a few more minutes of daylight, but this is the last month that we gain daylight and we don't gain it all month. We go all the way to June 20th. That's the summer solstice. I believe technically it's at 1041 Eastern time in the late evening. After that, we start losing daylight again. It's at a very, very slow pace. So you're not going to notice it for maybe a month or maybe a month and a half or so, but then we're headed back into the darker season just gradually over time. It'll pick up speed in the fall. That's when you'll really start to notice, but we'll squeeze out a little bit more daylight and in Indiana at seven to eight minutes, maybe just over 10 minutes. So it's not a lot from north to south. We are kind of we're kind of like the roller coaster. We're getting to the top and now it's really slow gains and then we'll start going back down here very shortly. Here's a closer look at Indiana. Once you get north of Purdue, eight minutes, seven minutes farther to the south. So we've got the solstice in play, but you're not going to really notice much change on our sunrises and sunsets. Yeah, when you put everything together, all the minutes and seconds, we gain seven minutes from the start of the month to the end of the month, but we're staying with those nine o'clock sunsets through the month of June. We're staying with the sunrises just after six o'clock or so, so not big changes, but weather changes are definitely happening throughout the month of June. In fact, June is our wettest month of the year, not May, it's June. Slightly, just barely, barely makes the cut there. Just under five inches on average what we get, and we typically get back into the 80s for our highs. We also notice the winds calm down. Thank goodness, the windy season is done. Here's May, we don't have June on there because June just drops like a rock. Now we can have thunderstorms that bring in a lot of wind, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not very breezy. However, it is very sunny at times in between those rain chances. What we typically notice in the month of June is that, yeah, it's our wettest month, but they usually come in the form of thunderstorms. And so we get dumped on and then you have several days of more sunshine. We are now into the sunny time of the year. We've got our highest sun angle of the year as well. For June, it's right about 74 degrees. I mean, that thing is right above our heads. Big difference compared to December where we have our shortest days, longest nights, only 27 degrees above the horizon. So you notice a huge change. And because the sun is just higher up in the sky, that's what helps heat us up. When you can directly heat something from the top, you get a lot hotter than rather than kind of heating something from the side. And so that's why June, we really get into that summertime. Once again, summer solstice, the official start of summer, June 20th, but technically it's meteorological summer because it is getting a lot warmer out there. And then of course, with the higher sun angles, June's the month that we actually get the worst sunburns. I'll show you a map here in a moment of those UV indexes, but as long as you have clear skies, you can have the sunburn really easily. So here's a graph showing you the cloud chances throughout the summertime and into the fall. We've got this dashed line, that's 50%. That's half your days are sunny and half your days are cloudy. So for June, we're at 45% of the time, we're either overcast or mostly cloudy. The rest of the time, we're tracking a lot of sun. And then you see that drop. August is technically our sunniest month on average. And so when you factor everything together, when you're factoring the solar angle and how much sun that you can get, you know, if we had a high solar angle, but it was cloudy every day, the UV index on average would be lower, but we still get some good sun. So you can see in June, we're over 10 you can get a sunburn really quickly in just uh, about 15 minutes if your skin's not protected. So uh, make sure you got the sunscreen going for fun. Uh, full moon. That's going to be June 10th through the 12th. This one's going to appear full, uh, but I believe the night of the 10th is when it will be its, its fullest technically. It's called the strawberry moon. Again, in that season where uh, some of those berries are, are uh, blooming and then starting to get ripe. So going to do some berry picking with the family from June and into July too. Really in July, you got a lot more as well. Uh, but we have other names for them as well. Different groups, uh, different Native American tribes have called them different things. Uh, depending on where you are in the country, because you're kind of getting different things in different parts of the country. But we have the blooming moon. That's certainly appropriate. The green corn moon. In fact, June, because we have such high solar angles, we're adding what's called a lot of GDUs to our corn and soybeans. GDU, growth degree uh, unit. And so you need so many in the summer in order to get the plants 
to full maturity, and then they'll start dying, then we'll harvest them. But those stalks are starting to grow with that good sunlight and that heat. But green corn moon, here's you got some stalks out there. The birth moon, a lot of babies uh, for plants and for uh, or animals and, and maybe humans too. Uh, the hatching moon, that's fun. And then this one's, I think, the most interesting, honeymoon. Uh, it's believed that that's one reason why we call the kind of a trip or uh, maybe the night or the days after a wedding you call the honeymoon, right? Over the past several centuries now, you know, maybe you take a week vacation or whatever that is. But typically, at least in some cultures, a lot of weddings take place in the months of May and June. And so when you get that full moon, they've called it the honeymoon. And we think that's kind of connected with the uh, going and celebrating after the wedding. So that's a fun one. But strawberry full moon, that'll be right there in the middle of the month. So now let's get to severe weather chances. What do we typically see for the month of June? Well, we see overall a northerly trend with all severe weather chances. So this is a kind of a composite map of wind, hail, and tornadoes. So notice how Indiana, we're definitely in one of those medium higher categories, but medium technically. But uh, the plains really start to wake up instead of all the severe weather really being concentrated in the deep south. As the jet stream lifts farther to the north, we get more of that severe weather in the central plains, and that'll continue to be the case into July and August. And then as we get back to the fall, everything retreats back off towards the south. But Indiana, we're in that zone too. Also kind of notice there is an upside down U shape, kind of a horseshoe shape a little bit with the severe weather. The reason why is we can start to build these high pressures over the Mississippi, and then we kind of get this ring of fire around it. So Indiana is definitely in that. So June is still traditionally severe weather season. Uh, once you get to July and August, we start to shut things down a little bit, but here in Indiana, you know, you can get a storm any time of the year. Now let's take a look at some of those individual threats. Wind risk, you're going to see a kind of a bullseye for us. That's also because of this ring of fire effect. When you get these really hot days, the humidity is building, especially thanks to our corn and soybeans, but you've got a good south wind connected with the Gulf, you can get these wind storms. And we're actually one of those higher risks, especially eastern Indiana and Ohio. We get these nasty wind storms at times. That also is the case throughout the Corn Belt in Ohio and then into the central plains. Then we get to the hail risk. Uh, because we are warming up, we can you know, still make big hail. The question is, how big are those hailstones by the time they reach the ground? Because we're getting warmer, a lot of times they are smaller, but we can still get some big hail with some of the bigger storms in June. But we typically still have enough cold air in the upper levels to make these huge honkers. And so hail alley is what we call it in the central plains. But we really see a concentration there in Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and into the eastern, uh, the front range there, just east of Denver into eastern Colorado. Then let's talk about tornadoes. So that's kind of the final step. Indiana still in that medium category, but we are pushing the tornado chances farther to the north and west. Notice how the deep south, Dixie Alley, really starts to quiet down. There's not as much rotation left. You can get pop up thunderstorms, but the jet stream's not over you. There's nothing to really spin the atmosphere. The jet stream's farther to the north, and so that's why we have a bigger tornado risk. They've been pretty quiet throughout the spring, and that's typical. We typically see a progression uh, of severe weather to the north and west as the plains essentially wake up. And so that's what we're going to see. This is another way to look at it. The average number of June tornadoes per state, Indiana, we're at four. You know, we're at 50 something tornadoes now. So we are well above average. Uh, we're double our annual average, but we're still in tornado season. Four in Indiana is what we typically would get when you look at all the data back from 2000 to 2024. But really notice the, the central plains. They get into their severe weather season while the deep south uh, kind of shuts down a little bit. It's all due to the jet stream is lifting farther to the north as that colder air is also retreating farther to the north. So we really start warming things up. But this yellow dashed area shows you where we typically still get severe weather for the month of June. So we'll keep an eye very closely on on Indiana, but typically our peak is in May and June still right there for severe weather, but we do typically see a drop off in July. You can still get nasty storms at times, but it's not something that maybe we get every week. You know, there might be a complex that hits just just right, but really the the bulk of the severe weather starts to push off towards the east. So we'll continue to watch here in Indiana, but maybe by July we really start to shut things down. All right, so let's talk about a few more things and then kind of wrap things up. A couple little extras, I would say. Uh, peak lightning bug season, that's the month of June. So this is the month to see it. If you can cut your grass just a little bit higher, maybe even leave a spot that's uh, 
uncut if you can. I know everyone has a different uh, living situation, uh, but it is lightning bug season and we're in the heart of it here in Indiana. Early June is our peak for southern Indiana. The rest of Indiana is mid June. Once a lightning bug emerges, they can uh, they usually survive about six weeks or so. They mate and then uh, eventually they'll lay their eggs and then they'll die. And then the next crop or the next uh, generation will come up next year. Let's also talk about hurricanes. June 1st, start of hurricane season. Not only do we keep tabs on weather to the west, now we have to really look out for weather towards the south. Because if you look at all these tracks, and I've got the scale here, so you can see the different colors showing you those intensities. And notice how you have those brighter colors over the oceans, and then the bluer, and, and some green still, over the mainland. That's just because, of course, once a hurricane leaves the ocean and it goes over land, it will start to weaken very quickly. But look, there are still some paths over Indiana where we looked at these historical uh, paths. This is coming from data from NOAA as they monitor all the June storms. And so it is potentially possible that we can get a rain system to come on through. We've done it before. It has to come in just right. Normally it has to be a system that hits Texas or parts of uh, eastern Mexico because what typically happens due to the jet stream, it'll come in and then it'll start to make that right hand curve. Now we've had some storms. Remember Helene last year? Well, that came through the Big Bend and then we had a, a different type of pattern there. And in fact, we have higher pressure to the uh, to the north and that actually swung the system back west. So that was a little bit more rare for us. Normally they have to hit Texas and Oklahoma, or Texas, then Oklahoma, and then kind of come at us. So we'll watch, but severe weather season, of course, is out there and uh, hurricane season is something that we'll have to watch as well. So the pattern stays active, but we do start to see things kind of wind down into just summer mode by the end of June. So hopefully that remains the case this year. Hopefully we can shut down severe weather season as soon as possible because it has definitely been rocky. Real quick, what about this June specifically? We've talked about what we've seen on average. Overall, we're not really expecting too much of a swing in terms of our severe weather, maybe actually a slight decrease. If you really consider the back half of June, we think there might be a faster drop off because what we've seen generally in weakening La Nina springs into summer is that much of the season is front loaded and we kind of seen that this year. It's actually played out. It doesn't always play out that way. You know, when we look at these averages, but it's definitely played out that way. She's been very aggressive, way more aggressive than we originally thought it would have been. Uh, so we think maybe a faster drop off. We'll see. Of course, we'll track everything. It's hard to look a full month out, right? And then when it comes to temperatures slightly above average, May was a little bit cooler than average many times. So we think we're going to swing back to a warmer than average for, for June. So we'll see how everything plays out, but anything that comes our way, we'll be tracking it for you.